Hi, everybody, and welcome to the webinar. Hope you all have all spent nice Easter holidays. And today we will go deeper into the volume profile principles we have already introduced last time. By the way, today S&P 500 is giving me the perfect scenario and act as a brilliant example of, of what I'm about to show you. Uh, let me just show you briefly how it looks like. Uh, before we get started, let me just quickly remind you the promotion still on by Volumetrica Trading and Tick Mill, uh, which allows you for those who are already Tick Mill customers to get a Volsys license at a special price. Uh, for those who are not customers already, you can still request a temporary free demo emailing uh, info at volumetricatrading.com. Uh, um, let me just write down the email address in the chat so you can have it. Here it is. This is for if you want to request a free uh, demo. And this is the link to access the promotion. Uh, once you get, once you click the link, you'll get to this page where you can purchase a license for a special price reserved uh, for for all of you who are Tick Mill uh, customers already. Of course, terms and conditions apply. And uh, oh, and another important thing, <laughs> just in case. Uh, you want to get in touch with me and maybe uh, make ask me some questions about the thing we are talking about during this series of webinar. Uh, this is my email address, so you can email me. And just in case you want to ask me something about volume profile, about the WAP, about the things we will be talking about. Uh, okay, so let's get started straight away. And um, let's have a look at the S&P 500 uh, today, how is trading. So last time, basically, uh, we were talking about the volume profile basic principles, like uh, what acceptance is, uh, what uh, value area means, what the POC is, and what, it's, what it represents in terms of uh, representation of volume. Okay, and uh, right at the end, before uh, before the webinar uh, was ending, we started introducing the concept of balancing. Okay, what do I mean for balancing? Uh, balancing is the process according to which uh, the market is facilitating trades around a specific area, okay? Uh, specifically, what I'm talking about is uh, when price acceptance, when, when price starts to get accepted around a specific area, uh, what happens to the volume profile? It, volume histograms, they become always thicker, okay? So you will see, you will notice, that the volume, the, the high volume node basically are getting always uh, more important. And of course, that makes a, a, a huge difference compared to the low volume areas we were talking about last time, which as we were saying, uh, they tend to uh, behave as a rejection area okay uh, unlike high volume area where uh, we tend to have more price ac acceptance so basically what happens when we have balancing uh, balancing is the process uh, where market is facilitating trades so basically an area gets probed okay price uh, gets to uh, explore a specific price area and it starts building some volume around that area 
okay but of course uh, that volume the building of volume around the area of the volume profile is a process that takes some time so uh, it doesn't happen straight away uh, price tend to accept and make a, to, to distribute to make a distribution a proper distribution around a specific area over and over uh, time and price moves that means we every time we see specific volume profile areas with some volume which have which which has traded around that area within that area we will tend to see price going back and forth moving around that area so basically price is uh, tends to uh, make a range around that area uh, this is the basic principle of distribution and of course the basic principle of balancing why do does market tend to balance price area basically just because uh, if we talk about volume volume is often a, syn a synonym of liquidity okay the the fact that much volume has traded over a specific area that means that there uh, market participants are willing to trade are willing to exchange to buy or sell okay so what happens all of this volume that we can see here which has traded is the result of this uh this per participants willing to to trade so basically what happens is that uh this is the basic principle of which we can use in terms of trading volume profile and, and uh, uh, how to use it in order to uh, recognize immediately which price area uh, have, has called more or less interest by market participants is to uh, spot whether we have volume traded or not. Okay, because uh, wherever we have some volume traded, like here, for example, we can tell price was here accepted okay so basically market was facilitating facilitating trades here but then what happens we can see as is in, in this example we have much more volume above this area i am highlighting here so that should mean we we have even more accept, acceptance here on the top of the day okay it is it is actually it is true but we still can tell by this particular shape of the volume profile that right below this high volume area at the high of the day we still have an area where price was accepted so market participants were willing to uh, to trade but this is this area is not 100% properly balanced what do i mean for that normally we can consider a balanced area uh, all of those volume profile all, all of those market areas where volume profile indicates us something similar to a bell-shaped curve okay uh, because this is the standard model of the distribution that means lots of volume is traded here at the middle and When we get far away from the middle, we tend to have always less volume, okay? Until we get to a point where we have zero volume at the top and zero volume at the very bottom. This is the basic model of the distribution of volume. And of course applies to, and to some other 
many other things. But let's talk about poly. Uh, when we don't have a profile shape reminding us of a bell-shaped curve, then we can tell that that area is still an unbalanced area. And that indicates us that price will be uh, trying maybe to uh, go back into that area in order to complete the process of balancing that area. Uh, that gives us many important indication for our trade, in especially in terms of uh, understanding what the price structure is of the market. Let's 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 analyze, for example, the day what what today is happening. Okay, you can you can see we have lots of volume here at the top. Okay, and uh, POC was shifted here. Why? Because of course. S&P 500 started trading here at around 43.90 and uh, started moving upwards and with not that much of a volume and then starting to started to build some volume right here and we are still trading in that area okay so right now we are uh, trading in the most traded area of the day on the POC, the point of control, as we were uh, saying last time. What does that mean? Considering point of control is supposed to uh, indicate, is supposed to tell us an, a, a balanced price for the day, an equilibrium price for the day, a price where both sellers and buyers are willing to are happy to trade because both of them they are uh, they're sure they're gonna make a, a good trade and can make money out of it actually since this POC is completely unbalanced according to the the range of the day that already shows us, an anomaly okay why because poc is normally supposed to be in the middle of its value area okay of course i'm not saying that it has to be right in the middle at the exact center of the of the value area but let's say every time poc is not really uh, placed in the middle part of the value area uh, that shows that there is something wrong with the price i mean not not really there is not really something wrong is, is it a, a distribution of volume that is telling us something uh, and in this specific example what is price telling us having shifted POC right here. It can mean two things, actually. The first, and of course, we have to uh, find out the one that applies the most at the, uh, at the, at the scenario of the day. The first thing is that maybe all of this volume can either stop the price or give the price a support to go back to go uh, sorry to to make a an upward continuation okay and of course that makes sense because uh since there is a lot of volume trading here this volume can act as a support as a temporary support for the price but in this case, or other, sorry, let me just tell you that in a, in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Second scenario, it can happen that this 
high volume area will act as a resistance and then price will start to trade lower. And in this case, of course, what would happen to this profile? It will be slowly filled over this area. Of course, if price would start moving this way, volume will grow right here. And this area of the volume profile will be balanced. Okay. And maybe at the, in such a scenario, at the end of the day, we will get a daily volume profile getting this kind of shape like this or maybe like this trying to to balance to make a, a similar a, 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 its shape similar to a bell curve because price will always tend to look for its balance point okay so of course that kind of uh, confirms what we were saying last time about POC. POC should never be traded. Why? Right? Because we can't predict what is going to happen from its point on. Okay. And exactly at this moment, right now, we can't tell. I I'm not able to tell if price is going to move higher or lower. Okay, we need to uh, look for uh, uh, price confirmation. And how can we look, uh, wh where, what kind of confirmation we can have by the price? First of all, we need to see how price moves away from the POC. Because as we said, high volume, node, high volume nodes, and of course, POC is the, more the most important high volume node of the day. It needs to move far away from it, and then it needs to be to make a, a small pullback on it. On the pullback, we will have the confirmation given by the, its price action or what price is uh, is willing to to treat this high volume node if he wants to treat it like a support or as a, or as a resistance. In this case, of course, as many of you have understood already, balancing is one of the first strategy we can apply to the volume profile analysis. Because right at this stage, what we could think about, we could look for price to move maybe below the POC. This first leg moving below the POC will give as the first clue of price acceptance right per year, and some volume may be accompanying price during its first leg. And with a pullback, which would respect the POC as a resistance, then we will have a confirmation that this POC is being treated as a resistance. And with the POC as a resistance, of course, our scenario of balancing all of this area below the POC will, of course, be confirmed or at least would have a price, an evidence given by the price, which can give us a clue of what a possible scenario would be. Let's talk about the other possible scenario what if that won't happen and poc will be treated as a resistance something like that will happen price will move upwards will come back here to this level and make a pullback before continuing higher in this case why uh, how volume, can volume profile help, so help us in order to, to track the market structure? 
personally let, let, let me just tell personally i don't i don't think that would happen i'm more uh i am more uh let's say <laughs> uh confident about the first hypothesis but but let's assume price was wants to continue higher okay we said poc in this case it doesn't express equilibrium at all it doesn't express a balanced volume area at all but if POC is supposed to stay here. That means that maybe, maybe this volume profile will have to be extended. Let's imagine this, the shape of a bell curve, okay? That could be just the lower part of an hypothetical bell curve, which will have an, extens an extension up to here okay so in both cases volume profile helps us to tell according to its structure and if it tells us if it's if it uh, su suggests us a, an unbalanced structure what the price is likely to do in the next in the next minutes in the next hour and of course that takes uh, a very important skill the ability of uh, perceive what its next shape <laughs> is going to be like uh, of course we can't try to predict things and trade on them I'm perfect. I'm perfectly aware of that, and uh, let me be honest. As I was telling you, uh, I always like to enter trade with the most uh, certainty, and uh, uh, so because I want to have tight stop losses. Okay, but this is the reason why volume profile. It is a fantastic tool to track and have an idea of what market structure is like, but is not uh, enough as a tool to then trigger the trade. Because if we want to validate scenarios uh, got by the volume profile, like, like it is, like, we need two things, basically. We need the price action to confirm what the volume, if the scenario we have thought at is really uh, happening is about to take place and then we need an order uh, an order flow tool so something that we will uh open right at the moment when we when our scenario is uh about to happen and we will use it to validate our our scenario for example for instance as i was telling you as i was perceiving <laughs> price is moving below POC right now. So I could tell, I can tell that price is already building a slight acceptance over here, over this area of the profile. So as we, as we said, I will have to wait in order to validate a short trade. pullback on this level right at this level on the poc back to the poc when price will, will be back will be back at that level then what i'm gonna do is getting an order flow tool like for example a footprint chart which we will be talking about in the next webinars and actually check if volume are trading exactly as I thought. So showing weakness of buyers and strength of sellers for a short trade. And of course, the opposite for a long trade. 
In that case, I'm using the market structure in order to get the direction of what my trade is supposed to be. The entry point, the entry level, the entry area, let's say the entry area, and the perfect timing to execute the trade. Of course, volume profile still helps me in this kind of with this kind of analysis to to get what my uh, target profit is more likely to be. Let's have a look at this together. Let's assume this price area here really will be balanced as I'm, as I'm expecting it to be. So at the end of the day, I will maybe have distribution area that means a high volume area like this which will be balanced by the price moving up and down around it but if i if i take this short trade where i'm supposed to take profit and not try to uh push my trade further of course, using the volume profile principles I was talking about last time. Where do we have the most important low volume area in front of me if I'm going short? I would say maybe here, I have one here and I have another one here. So my perfect target let's see will be given by the high volume notes immediately before the most prominent low volume area which could represent a reject a rejection for price so it can reject price against me That, of course, gives me the clue of what the distribution area is about to become. OK, uh, I know there are many variables about volume profile analysis. There are many, <laughs> many nuances. There are many details to be looking at. Uh, and of course, uh, it is very hard to explain them all in just an half an hour. Uh, that's why uh, if you, in case you have some questions, just mail me and we'll be glad to, uh, to reply to you. Uh, let me just uh, know if you have some questions right now. Apparently no. <laughs> I hope I hope that wasn't too difficult. That's why there are no questions. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me just uh, remind you uh, my contacts again. So if you want to request free plat demo of the Voltsys platform, you can email info at volumetricartrading.com and uh, if you uh, are already a Tickmill customer you can get the offer at the link I've just put in the chat okay uh, so uh, thanks for your participation and uh, see you at the next webinar next week. Uh, have a good evening and good trading.